Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. And I am Pastor Alvin White, and it is day six of our seven days of prayer and fasting. It's day six. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it's Saturday morning. Happy Saturday to you. 
Good morning and thank you so much for joining me this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Alvin White and Pastor Latoya, my lovely wife, won't be able to be on today, but she sends her love and she's taking care of some things in the background. So I want to welcome, good morning to you, uh, Sierra Gray. Good morning, Elijah and Alyssa Braddox. Good morning to you guys, Elders Stephen and Rochelle Taylor. Good morning, Mary Bolden. Good morning, Carolyn, Terrence and Carolyn Berry. I see you. Good morning. Good morning. Elder Stephen and Rochelle Taylor, good morning. Marsha Wright, good morning. William and Gretchen Hudson, Dollar Bill, good morning. Good morning to you. Linda Tripp, good morning. I see you. Lavetta Tripp, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Carolyn Berry, hello. Yes, good morning. Eddie and B. Huey, yes, good morning. Good morning to you guys. Rhonda Herring, good morning to you. God bless you. Hello, Auntie Rose. Yes, we thank the Lord for another day, a day to be with you all together, lifting up his name. Praise God. Amen. Good morning. Yes, Dwight and Carolyn Moss. Good morning to you guys. Good morning on Instagram. Sybil Sanders, God bless you. Good morning to you. And those of you that are watching on Instagram, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. I love you with the love of the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a beautiful day outside. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we bless you this morning. We worship you this morning. We adore you this morning. Father, we lay everything down at your feet and we cast down every care, every thought, every imagination. And we just say thank you. Thank you for your love, your joy, and your peace. And we bless you, Lord God. We give our hearts to you. We give our bodies to you. We give our souls to you. Our mind belongs to you. Our emotions belong to you. Our emotions belong to you. How we feel belongs to you. We are saying that you have total ownership and authority on what we feel and how we feel. Our hearts belong to you. We love you with all of our soul, strength, our mind, our hearts. We love you with everything that's in us. Father, today we forgive those who wronged us. We forgive them. We will not hold it any bitterness, any regret, resentment, unforgiveness. And we receive your grace and mercy today. We are in love with you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Good morning again, all of those joining on Instagram. Hallelujah. Good morning. God bless you. We have been going through, it is now day six of our seven days of prayer and fasting. How's the fast been going? How's the fast been going? Praise God. It's day six. We're here. We're around that curve. At the end, the fast ends tomorrow after church service. After church service, resurrection church service, the fast ends. Praise God. So how has the fast been going? I'm praying and hoping that the fast has been going wonderful. 
that God has been revealing things to you, opening your eyes to see and your ears to hear. Praise God. I'm praying that the fast has done good things for your body, good things for your soul, that you spent more time in prayer, more time worshiping and communing with God. Um, Linda Tripp says, very good. Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, Carolyn Moss says, awesome. Elder Stephen Taylor says, awesome. Marsha Rice says, great. Good morning, Patricia Taylor. Good morning to you. Mary Bowden says, awesome. Gretchen Hudson. Yes, God. Amen. We have been going through this journey. Now, remember, Passover started last week, Saturday, at evening time. Passover. Again, the celebration of the blood passing, uh, you know, causing the, the curse to pass over. It started a week ago. And then we had Palm Sunday. We've been walking through this journey of each day. Over 2,000 years ago, what happened each day? Over 2,000 years ago, each day. So if we go to Mark chapter 15, Mark's gospel chapter 15, verse 42, Mark chapter 15, verse 42, praise God. I'm so glad to hear that the fast is going well with you guys, praise God. It says, now when evening had come, now this this is uh, Friday evening is what it's talking about. Praise God. All right. Now, when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God coming and taking courage went in to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus Pilate marveled that he Jesus was already dead and summoning the centurion he asked him if he had been dead for some time so when he had found out from the centurion he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in the linen. Now Joseph of Arimathea was one of the scribes and the Pharisees. He was like Nicodemus in his heart, seeing that, hey, you know what? I may not have all the answers. So Joseph of Arimathea he was with Nicodemus and they were taking the body. Joseph of Arimathea was a very wealthy man. He had his own tomb. He had his own property. And he bought fine linen, in verse 46, took him down and wrapped him in the linen. And he laid him in the tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, observed where he was laid. Now, what they did is they sealed the tomb. That's what the centurion have done. That's what they did is they sealed the tomb. When they rolled the stone... The centurion says, I can see that the body is in the tomb. I can see that the body is in the tomb. And what they did is they sealed it. If we go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 62, Matthew's gospel 27, verse 62, it says, On the next day when 
uh, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how the deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Notice they called Jesus the deceiver. These are the Roman soldiers. Notice that they called Jesus the deceiver, but he's the one, he's the way, the truth, and the life. There's no deception in Jesus. But here it is. They're calling Jesus the deceiver. And they're saying, hey, if they steal his body away, the deception will be worse. Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way, make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. See, they had to seal the stone. And Pilate is there and he's setting his seal on the stone. What the Pharisees and Sadducees did is they created a conspiracy theory. What the Pharisees and Sadducees did is they created a conspiracy theory that his body had been taken, that the disciples took and hit his body, took and did something with his body. And they had that conspiracy theory planned just in case Jesus rose from the dead. So the devil loves conspiracy theories because they come from him. Remember, Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning and there's no truth in him. And when he lies, he lies from his own resources. So the devil is a liar and he loves conspiracy theories. Now, on Saturday over 2000 years ago, Jesus, as I told you before, he was preaching and teaching to those that were in Abraham's bosom. He was preaching and teaching to those that are in Abraham's bosom. He went there and they saw that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, Jesus is in the center of the earth. Um, if you go to Matthew chapter 12, somebody say, how do you know he was in the center of the earth? If you go to Matthew chapter 12, look at verse 38. It says, then some of the scribes and Pharisees, this is Matthew 12 verse 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Do you see that? He was in the heart of the earth. Glory be to God. Good morning, my father-in-law, Charlie Brown. So he was in the heart of the earth. Now, they... I don't know how many people out there are science buffs. But they just found another layer or compartment of the earth. They just found this. The four layers they, that people have known are the cross, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. And within that, some sub-layers. But they just found a major layer. If you Google new layer of earth discovered, And if you Google new layer of earth discovered, the new fifth layer is the innermost inner core of the planet. It's called the new fifth layer is the mo innermost inner layer. And they believe, some believe that this, they found hell. Now that's very, very powerful. And that's where Jesus was. That's where Jesus was. And he's in there and he's preaching and teaching to those. He's teaching that to Elijah, to Moses, to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, to Elisha, all of the prophets, Jeremiah, all of them. King David. They're all seen, the king of kings. This is over 2,000 years ago. He's spending his time in Sheol. Remember, Sheol was two parts. There was Abraham's bosom and then there was Hades. And he's spending his time in there. There was a great gulf between these two. If you go to Luke chapter 16, if you go to Luke's gospel chapter 16, what am I talking about? There, Luke 16 verse 19, go there. Luke 16 verse 19. Now this is before heaven. Because before there was the blood of Jesus and redemption, no one could go to heaven. So people weren't dying and going to heaven. They were going to Sheol. Abraham's bosom, which was a place of paradise, and then Hades, which was a place of torment. Okay? So then, now that Jesus has come, been resurrection, res resurrected, we now have redemption and people can go straight to heaven. So when they die, 
they spirit go straight to heaven. But it wasn't like that before Jesus. So in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus has given us a picture of that. He says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Do you see that? That's the side of Sheol. Pastor Wycliffe from Kenya, Africa, God bless you. We will get together. The rich man also died and was buried and being in torment in Hades. So the rich man went to Hades. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So he could see afar off. That's what would happen. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Do you see that? So there was some false religion that there was a river called Styx. Ever heard of that before? And that death, row, row your boat, could row you over from one side to another. And that's just not true. In Sheol, there was Abraham's bosom and then there was uh, Hades. And there was a great gulf. Some think of it as some type of place of water like the Gulf of Mexico or the Gulf of uh, you know like a, a water mass and some think of it as like a canyon either way there was a separation but there was no you know death Row, row your boat going from one side to the, you couldn't go from one side. It was, you cannot pass from here to there. Okay. But thank God that is over. And now we have to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So over 2000 years ago, at this time, Jesus is preaching and teaching to those that were in Abraham's bosom. They receive Jesus the same way you and I receive Jesus. They receive repentance for their sins. They receive the blood. And then what happened is, is when he resurrected, they resurrected as well. Many of them went to heaven. Some of them even stayed on earth for 40 days. Just like he did. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. We want to invite you tomorrow to Empowering World Christian Center's Resurrection Day Celebration. If you're watching this and you're brand new, you can download the free Empowering World Christian Center Church app. You can go to our website. You can register for tomorrow's service at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to have live in-person service. It's going to be a wonderful time. And... We will be streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Praise God. Father, we worship you and bless you. We adore you and we thank you. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We magnify you and thank you. 
You're holy and you're righteous. And we see you in our past. We see you in every ounce of our past. We see you in every fiber of our past. You were there the whole time. You were there the whole time. In the good, the bad, the ugly. You were there, you were there, you were there. You're great and mighty. And we love you, Jesus. You're great and mighty. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Thank you again, those who joined us on Instagram, those that are watching on Facebook Live, those that are watching the replay on Facebook Live, and those that are watching the uploaded version on YouTube. We love you with the love of the Lord. We pray that this is the best Passover season for you, resurrection season for you. This is such a spiritual time. It's such a powerful spiritual time. It's one of the greatest times on the face of the planet. It's, the, it's, it's regarding the greatest story ever told. Jesus. Imagine the earth over 2,000 years ago. Imagine the earth over 2,000 years ago with no Jesus. Imagine what his disciples went through. Imagine what his family and friends went through. Over 2,000 years ago, Saturday was a very challenging day. It was a very, very challenging day. They're thinking to themselves, what just happened? Did that just really happen? And they're waking up Saturday and they're saying, goodness gracious, it really did happen. But we've seen the end of the story. He comes back. He comes back. He comes back. And tomorrow we're going to celebrate. He's alive. He came back. And he walked the earth. He walked the earth. He walked the earth. He went and walked the earth. And he brought back with him people that had died too. For 40 days. They walked the earth. And now he's alive at the right hand of the Father. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Elders Robert and Tracy Carr, God bless you. Hallelujah. He's alive at the right hand of the Father. Glory be to God. Think about that. Think about what his disciples may have went through over 2,000 years ago. They must have had some feeling of hopelessness. But you and I, we do not have to have that feeling at all. We have the assurity and the confidence that he's alive. Glory be to God. Thank you so much. Love and share this. Send this out. Hallelujah. We bless you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day.